The Amazing Hypnotic Bedtime Story Written by Jody Whiteley Chapter 1 The Cottage Ordinarily, you wouldn't rent a cottage in an unlikely place like Sarnia, Ontario, Canada to stay here for a few weeks all by yourself, but something unusual happened. For several months before you arrived here, when you engaged in any kind of social media, you noticed an advertisement for this cottage. It announced itself as outrageously inexpensive and just the right place for you. You pointed this out to friends and family, but not one of them seemed to think there was anything unusual about these ads, and none of them thought going there was a good idea for them. But every time one of your people did look at an ad, they would dreamily say, you should go. Often you had been waking up with vague recollections of dreams about yourself being at this cottage. These were interesting dreams you wished you could remember more of. A series of coincidental events led you to have two weeks off all to yourself without much to do, so you clicked on the ad. From this time forward, everything kept falling into place automatically till you found yourself here, where you are right now, in this little cottage not far from the beach, reading this book. You are in the living room, half sitting, half lying on the sofa. This is an extremely comfortable sofa and you enjoy how it feels beneath you as it softly and securely supports your weight. You are relaxed. Every fiber of every muscle has released any and all tension, gone loose and limp, and has just let go. You take a deep breath, almost like a sigh, and relax even more deeply, sinking just a little bit deeper into the soft cushions because you feel more heavy when you completely relax. You are joyfully thinking to yourself, about how happy and relaxed you really are in this place, how good that feels, and what a good idea it is for you to be here. The living room is the only room in the little house that could be considered large. The floor is hardwood, and the walls are painted the nondescript color usually referred to as Builder's Beige. At the end of the sofa, not too far from your feet, is a modern flat-screen television with a desktop computer beside it, left here for your use and enjoyment. These courtesies have turned out to be a total waste of time because the internet access here is constantly interrupted and usually not working at all. The same applies to the telephone in the house and your cell phone as well. You met your neighbor, Annabelle, as you were bringing your things in earlier today. She turned out to be a kindly, silver-haired old widow who has been living in a house only a few yards from your cottage for many years. She complained her house was much too big for her, 
but letting it go would be the same as letting go of all the memories it contained, and these were too precious for her to part with. During your conversation that was brief by Sarnia standards and unusually long compared to how much time people in other cities spend talking to strangers, she mentioned the area was what was called a known problem area for cell phone coverage. She also reported other tenants had complained of signal problems across a variety of devices, guessing this was because the building was made of cement with a copper roof. It's worse by the well, she added, nodding knowingly about something you know little about, yet. The well is behind you, behind the house, and you can't see it right now because it is dark outside. So dark outside, you can see nothing outside of the windows. They are all just black, dimly reflecting the contents of each room. Part of your mind notices, as you are reading this book, how relaxed your breathing has become. You are breathing deeply and evenly, slowly and softly. You become aware you are breathing the way someone would breathe if they were already deeply asleep. You like the relaxed way the muscles in your abdomen feel as they gently rise and fall with each soft, slow, relaxing breath. Your entire body, all at once, feels heavy and relaxed, but all the little muscles in your face feel even more so, especially the ones around your eyes. Your eyelids feel heavy, and each blink seems to take longer and longer, till you realize you are not really blinking, your eyes are closed, and you are just forcing them half open from time to time to convince yourself you are awake, and you feel so sleepy you are honestly not sure you are awake. The words on the page are too difficult to focus on anymore, so you put the book down, close your eyes for good this time, and allow yourself to drift off to sleep. You can't tell if it is taking you a long time or a short time to fall asleep, and it doesn't really matter because this feeling of falling asleep is so delicious, you are happy to savor this time drifting gently down into the soft darkness. And you can feel yourself drifting down as a very distinct physical impression. You are floating down deeper, deeper, and even more deeply still, in an infinite void where there is nothing but freedom, and this is a very pleasant feeling. At first all is black, yet you do not sense you are in darkness. The black seems somehow bright and alive. You cannot see your hands or your body, but you also know this is not because of any darkness. 
You feel as if you have left your body behind, comfortably snoozing on the couch. You are exploring an abyss where there is still a part of your mind aware of the body on the sofa, but what you are experiencing is so wonderful you must go deeper into it, and the deeper you go into the void, the better it feels. As you listen to your own breathing, you are not sure if it is getting louder or it is just filling your awareness and the space around you more completely. It is a soft, soothing, shushing sound, reminiscent of the sound you heard earlier when you were at the beach, having a few minutes of quiet time, watching the gentle waves roll in, and contemplating the pretty round pebbles and stones the water was pushing up to the shoreline to sparkle pale blue, taking on the same monochromatic quality of the scene around you. What is memory moves into your present reality as this sound changes without changing, and you are hearing the sound of waves breaking upon the shore. And this is something you can hear from anywhere on the property outside of this cottage, because this is how close you are to the beach right now. You think to yourself, this is how it must be while I am sleeping, I just never remember it. You are grateful and glad to experience what it is like to be asleep while you are fully awake. You are, in fact, more fully conscious than you have ever been before. You feel as if your consciousness is singing with a live energy as your body snoozes on a sofa that is right here and far away all at the same time. Soon you become aware of specks and swirls of color moving around you, and these little anomalies grow and change to form images. In the beginning you see very little that makes sense or has any meaning, but as you focus and give what you are looking at your full attention without thinking about anything else, it all becomes more congruent, and a scene forms below you. You recognize the well right away. You have seen the ruins of it earlier today, when you were exploring the land around your temporary home. You even stood on the flat, round patio stone in the center of it, that had been placed upon the dirt used to fill it in. For some reason you felt the need to raise your hands to the sky and proclaim to whatever deity you believe in or not, or that is real or imagined, that you had arrived. Then you may or may not have felt a little silly and hoped no one saw you do this. And even if this did happen, you would have been generating useless anxiety because no one could see you back there through so many trees. The well is not a ruin now in your vision or dream. It looks newly built. The rough hewn square stones are forming a ten-foot circle level with the mossy ground around it, and within this enclosure is a lazy whirlpool of water that may be glowing ever so slightly, or perhaps it is just a trick of the dawn's earliest light. There isn't any dirt or stones within the well yet, 
from your time when it has been filled in, but you already know this is about to change. The sun peeks over the horizon to send golden shards of light through the trees, and you are able to make out what is happening around the well. There is a man standing beside it, dressed as a man would be over a hundred years ago, if he is a farmer and not very wealthy. His head is bowed as if he is very sad. There is a similar man beside him with his hand on the sad man's shoulder. Backed up to the well are two rough, horse-drawn carts loaded with dirt. Each cart has a man on it shoveling the dirt into the well. You focus your attention on the sad man and his companion to hear more clearly what his friend is saying. Tis Satan's water, Abe, he says as he massages a sad shoulder to ease some obvious grief and disappointment. It isn't right. Let us be done with it. There's plenty of water in the lake, but a few yards yonder. There's no need for this foolish well. Surely she will understand and be still. Then all is quiet for a time, save for the sound of shovels digging into the dirt and pouring it into the well. You rise up, floating up gently, to see your cottage is no longer there, nor are the neighboring houses. You feel a little butterfly sensation in your stomach as you float up higher above the treetops till you can see the lake nearby and the pastures bordering the woods far below you, your view stretching out from the road to the lake up the shore to a distant point on one side and to a small town where the lake meets the river on the other. You would like to move your awareness to the town to explore, but when you push your mind in this direction, it feels magnetically drawn back to the well and the sound of dirt being poured onto it. Each sound sounds more and more like white noise or soft static and grows even louder, taking up more space in your consciousness till this is all you can hear and this sound closes in around you and stays the same as it changes and fades, growing more quiet and moving within you. You realize this is again the sound of your own relaxed, sleepy breathing. The scene below you is melting, giving way to darkness, and you find yourself watching what you do see when your eyes are closed and you pay attention to what you see on the backs of your resting eyelids. Observing your breathing, you notice it is making the smooth yet raspy sound it makes when your throat has become so relaxed it has narrowed, causing the inhalations and exhalations to make a quiet, relaxing sound. This is the sound you usually hear just before you snore and as soon as you think about this, you very gently snore and enjoy listening to this sound, likening it to the sound of a deeply contented cat's purr.
You are able to feel how your body feels when it is sleeping, and this is a very pleasant feeling. You deeply feel yourself from inside yourself and are observing yourself as if your consciousness is a separate entity from the sleeping person that you are. Dimly at first, the objects in the room around you form in the darkness, then become more defined as you easily pass an invisible barrier to be in the room you are in leaving yourself on the couch to rest for a time. At first glance, the living room is exactly the way you left it when you first nodded off. But then you look at the book you've placed face down on the white coffee table, you find it very interesting, because when you put the book down, you had only read a couple of pages, Yet as it sits now, it appears as if a quarter of the book has been read and the coffee table looks just a little bit more dusty than it did before. You look at the big window at the back of the house and this window is not black anymore. It is a little bit grey, tinged with soft light. This window is so big, it takes up most of the wall in the living room, and it looks out onto a sun porch that has a translucent plastic roof and so many windows, you might say it resembles a greenhouse. You can see the windows facing onto the backyard are glowing grey more brightly. You open one of the two sets of French doors, conveniently placed either side of the huge window to complete the back living room wall. You ease your head in to see odd bits of furniture left there, and all looks as it should be, so you go through the room to the sliding glass doors to get a better view of what is happening outside. From this window at the back of the sun porch, back patio, small yard, rickety fence, overgrown bushes, crumbling steps, second round yard containing what is left of the well, and woods beyond all seem permeated with a soft grey glow. The glow is so subtle, you stare out for a little bit of time wondering if you really are seeing something unusual or if it is just a trick of the moonlight. You pull open one of the sliding doors, inhale deeply through your nose, and the air smells fresh, earthy, and inviting. The air in the sun porch suddenly feels overly warm and stale, when compared to the cool, fresh air you are breathing from outside, so you step out onto the cement patio and look up to see if the light is coming from the sky, but it is not. It seems somewhat brighter by the well now, and you take a few steps in that direction before you pause and listen to a gurgling sound coming from the well. And as you listen, the sounds form a pattern, taking on a rhythm like music. Your feet do not move as you float towards and then over the source of this sound. Then you settle back down to stand at the edge of the well. You look down into the water. It is softly swirling where only dirt and stones once were or will be. It is all so beautiful in a hypnotic kind of way and you are drawn into the water in the well. 
You enter without causing any kind of splash or disturbance, and below the thin membrane of the surface, it doesn't feel wet. It doesn't feel like anything at all, and you sink down into it, gently and slowly sinking down below where it feels wet and into the airy space below. Above you, you can see the water rotating and glowing, yet around you feels just like empty air. Gently swaying this way and that, you reach out to feel the stones in front of you. They are rough, yet covered with a silky fine dust that enables your fingers to glide over them smoothly as you go deeper. As you go deeper, rough stones gives way to smooth white wall that sparkles just a little bit, and this has its own soft glow. The smooth crystalline rock feels warm, and as you sink further down, you feel pockets within it, some vacant, others holding round stones of various sizes. You wonder how deeply you can go into the well, and when you look down, you see you can go deeper and deeper, deeper and deeper, deeper and deeper, deeper and deeper, and even more deeply still, as this tunnel into the rock goes down much further into the ground. Floating down, more softly slowing, Below you so far you see something that appears very small through a haze, and even from so far away you can understand there are many round stones from the recesses in the walls that have fallen to the bottom of the well. As you are reaching down towards them, the air or water that feels like air around you grows warmer, more moist, then it feels as if it is pushing you upward, like a breath, and you rise up past the stones to the surface to gently bob and float here in what feels like water around your neck and shoulders, and what feels like a warm exhale to the bottom part of your body. You hear something rustling in the undergrowth not far from where you are. This could be a raccoon, but it might be something bigger. You continue to bob and float for a moment, feeling safer in the well as you try to decide if you should climb out and find out what it is. Stay in this warm, semi-wet, welcoming water or go back to the house. In the rustling, you think you hear a whisper that says, It's okay. You listen more closely and think you do hear this whisper come to you from the bushes saying, Relax, you are exactly where you are supposed to be. And you trust this voice without really knowing why, other than being in this well has filled you with a uniquely euphoric feeling you have never experienced before, and you like what is happening. So you do relax and lay back, allowing your entire body to float up, ride the soft, slow whirlpool as you look at the stars in the night sky. You lazily muse about how it might be nicer if you could see more stars. And perhaps you would, 
but for the light that is always there in this area, tinging the sky orange towards the southeast. This is where the oil refineries and chemical plants that are Sarnia's main industry lie, and the giant Bunsen burners there never rest. You are glad to be in the farthest northeast reaches of this small city, inhabiting some of the most desirable real estate downwind of what ceaselessly works to reduce what we all use, but would rather do away with. You close your eyes and a thought manifests in your own mind that seems to come from somewhere else. Each time the thought softly speaks, a soft light appears in the upper left corner of your field of vision and it says, Sky, Sky on, on fire, fire dotted, dotted with, with stars, stars I once knew as suns, suns and, and all, all is exactly, exactly as it should be. be. You mumble to yourself, all is exactly as it should be, and for this time you believe this to be true. The thought voice returns and tells you it is now time to go home and go to bed, adding, there is so much for you to do, you will need your rest. This comes with a feeling that is so kind and loving, you trust it and feel perfectly safe and secure doing as it suggests. You feel as if the water is assisting you as you climb out of the well without effort to rest for a moment on its mossy shore. The bushes are quiet and still. Whatever was there before seems to be gone, but you still feel as if someone is watching you as you walk back to the cottage. Oddly enough, it feels more like being watched over, cared for, and protected than anything that might cause you concern. In the living room, you see your body is not on the couch anymore, and you feel as if you are standing in it as one whole person. Your clothing is already dry and you wonder for a moment if you ever were really in the well at all or if you were dreaming or sleepwalking or both. Your book is on the clean and tidy table as it should be with only a few pages read. You are tired and would like to go to sleep now, so you go into the bedroom where you tried out the bed earlier and found it to be the most comfortable bed you have ever lied down on. This bed felt so good at the time, you were tempted to take a nap right then and there, but were curious about your new surroundings and wanted to explore. And a nap too late in the afternoon can give you insomnia, so you put off enjoying the bed until later. Now you are grateful to climb between the crisp white sheets, and this bed is so magnificently comfortable. If you had any worry, about unusual things, it quickly slips away. And you inhale deeply, filling your nose with a barely perceptible yet intoxicating fragrance of some kind of perfume or laundry product you have never smelled before. But you must admit, as you keep breathing in deeply through your nose, 
is somewhat addictive. Something about this smell is making you feel even better, happier, and more relaxed. You breathe in so much of it, you begin to feel lightheaded, so you slow your breathing down to a more steady, relaxed rhythm, gently sampling the delicious aroma with each soft breath. The fresh, cool feel of the sheets is in contrast to the slight stuffiness in the room around you. All of the windows have been shut because during this time of year, being late summer or early fall, it can be quite cool outside sometimes, as it was when you first arrived, and it can become suddenly warm or even hot out in the space of a few minutes. You consider opening one of the heavy, old, wood frame windows, but that seems like too much work right now, as you are resting so well, and would like to rest more and more deeply. So you close your eyes, ready to rest more deeply, into a long, sound, comfortable sleep. You would like to experience again what happened moments before during your nap on the sofa and patiently wait for those kinds of feelings to come to you. To pass the time, you remember what it was like when you took a little bit of time earlier in the day to visit the beach. You take yourself back to this time because it was so tranquil it might help you fall asleep. You remember the sand as being soft and warm under your hands, feet, and behind. The water is still and placid, unusually so for a body of water so vast. This lake is big enough to be called an inland sea were it not fresh water, and barely a ripple is disturbing the surface. The sun is softened behind a veil of smooth, pale blue clouds. Tiny little lapping sounds and the occasional call of a distant seagull are the only things painted on the palpable silence. And you listen to this silence between the sounds and behind the sounds till the silence deepens and you close your eyes to more acutely feel how it feels to be in the presence of this quality of serenity. Behind your closed eyelids, you imagine all the shades of soft, muted blue blending together in a misty seascape that has no sharp edges or defined lines. You rest into this memory and rest here more deeply till you notice the same feeling of higher awareness you experienced in the living room has visited itself upon you again and you feel to feel 
if you can feel your body becoming more fully relaxed as it drifts into a light and pleasant slumber so you can float away into nothingness to enjoy interesting dreams. You dream of water and the lady next door, but these images come to you with no real context or meaning. You dream of bits and pieces of things like a wall parting the trees in your backyard and crawling through a tunnel dug deep into the earth. Then your dreams drift off into alien territory, becoming much more abstract. You dream of crystals that sing to you, making the most beautiful music. They form multi-dimensional shapes you wouldn't be able to properly perceive or understand while you are awake. These burst into being energy flowers that rain sparks to drift down and rest upon the ground, glowing less and less brightly till they simply lie there as softly sparkling white gravel. You drift in and out of consciousness, often aware that you are dreaming as each little parcel of time drifts by. Your bed becomes more warm and your body feels more awake and alive. You soon feel as if you have rested long enough and are refreshed, energized and ready to do something fun. You long to be outside in the fresh air. You put on your most comfortable slippers and round the bend in the hallway, opting to stop at the front door this time to find out what is happening in the front yard. You open the heavy black wooden door and peer out into the semi-darkness. You are welcomed by a night bathed in pale blue moonlight. The sky twinkles with a few bright stars and fireflies dance among the flowers. There is a slight breeze smelling like the lake. And this night is so lovely, you must go out to spend some time in it. You can hear the sound of waves rolling up onto the shore more loudly than you normally would.
The water here is as changeable as the weather. It can be completely still one moment and then churn itself into rolling surf the next. This night the sound is as if the largest of lumbering swells are turning themselves over to slam down onto the pebbles that line the shore. Each time a wave roars, you hear a tinkling undertone that sounds almost like shattering glass, but is somewhat more musical in nature. It is a short and pleasant two-acre walk to the beach. Just across the narrow road is a path between two houses that are, like all of the houses in this area, larger than your own. Along this path you are kept company by a row of ancient gnarled maple trees There is another narrow road, virtually devoid of traffic at any time of day. And of course, completely abandoned now, except for yourself, to cross to come to the gate in the white chain-link fence that is the same as the dilapidated white fence bordering your inner backyard. And you are sure these fences were erected many years ago by someone who thought it might keep someone out. But they do not, so they are purely decorative. But only if you are able to imagine things that are neglected, abandoned, shoddily built, and useless decorative. On the other side of the gate, the trail widens for the last few yards to the beach. And it goes between two houses that may be considered mansions by some. These houses are majestically perched upon a gentle rise that slopes away down to the sand. The water is calmer than the sound of the waves earlier suggested. And the sound of surf fades away to silence as you approach the shore. There is a warm wind coming off of the lake, driving small swells and ripples towards you. You kick off one slipper and sample the water with your toes. It is warm, almost bathtub warm. A perfect temperature of warm, inviting you to go in further. You slip your foot out of your other slipper and wade in under an ever-growing and more brightly glowing full moon. Now we both know, you already know, you are not supposed to swim alone at night. But you still feel watched over, cared for, and completely safe and secure, so you tell yourself you will not go in very deeply, and continue.
The water swirls around your lower legs in delightful, warm and cool eddies. And this feels nice enough to lure you in further with your feet treading down onto soft sand with each step. And you take each step slowly, one step at a time, then wait between each one to feel how the water feels when you step in just a little bit more deeply. And the deeper you go into this water, the better it feels as you move slowly downward with the water gently swelling around your hips and thighs. The water has stilled to being as a vast sheet of glass, and each step is making you feel lighter, lifting you up, before setting you down again to rest on the soft bottom. All thoughts of caution have drifted away on the warm wind and you are calmly going in more deeply. The water is up to your waist when you realize there is something different under one of your feet. You move your toes over and around it to feel a round stone about the size of a softball. It is perfectly smooth and very slippery. As you move on, you find another and another. And as you continue in up to your chest, these stones become more common, till, as you are going more deeply into the lake, you are walking up to a pile of these round stones. So slippery, your feet become too confused to stay on task so you launch yourself forward using smooth strokes to glide across the surface of the glassy water, feeling more buoyant than you normally would. You swim out far away from the shore, carried by a warm and gentle current that is gradually turning you around till the darkness you are swimming into becomes the dark outline of houses, trees, and the beach. From this vantage point, you can see the inky, indigo, nearly black water is glowing ever so slightly in a band just off the shore that matches where your feet first encountered the round stones. This glowing effect is so barely perceptible, it could just be a reflection of the moonlight, or it could be something else. So when you come to this place, you slip under the water for a moment to retrieve a round stone to see if it glows. You hold it in both hands as firmly as you can without causing it to slip away. And use your legs to kick yourself past the last few feet to where you know you can stand more firmly.
holding the stone orb up to the moonlight, you carefully balance it on the palm of your right hand. It feels like it likes to stay there and balances easily in spite of the fact it is so slippery and it is spinning. It seems to be repelling your hand, hovering micrometers above it, as if riding on a magic field. Its pearlescent surface shines and sparkles, and it does glow ever so slightly. Your palm pleasantly tingles, and you like how this feels, so you keep this with you as you walk the last few feet out of the lake and onto the shore, careful to keep your ball balancing on your right hand. You become very aware of how weighted down you are by your wet clothing, yet you feel refreshed and energized as well. The sand you tiptoed so lightly over on the way here feels more heavy and harder to march through. When you transfer the orb to your left hand, the warm wind grows stronger as if helping you and pushing you along, drying your clothes as you go. You transition from sopping wet to just slightly damp quickly and you climb the hump on your way back to the house. You summit the little hill and on top of it the air changes drastically from warm and windy to still and icy cold. You can see your breath escaping you as clouds of steam. You feel your clothing to feel it is now completely dry and your left palm is warm. This warmth coming from the stone is now floating past your wrist and into your lower left arm. Your elbow warms up, as does your upper left arm to your shoulder. Each joint this warm feeling flows through is being infused with a deeply pleasant warmth that radiates into every fiber of your connective tissues, then flows out along your nerves, filling them with feelings of pure pleasure and bliss. This feeling now flows across your chest, into your right arm, up into your neck, head, and all of the little muscles, bones, and joints in your face. You 
you bow your head and close your eyes to focus on feeling this wonderful tingling warmth flowing down into your abdomen and down your back to pull into the bony basket of your pelvis. It is flowing past your hips, thighs, into your knees, down your calf muscles and bones to your ankles, feet, big toes, and each and every smaller toe. You are warm inside, and by contrast, the sharp, cold air feels deliciously clean and refreshing on your skin. When you open your eyes, you see the trees and undergrowth have taken on a heavy layer of frost and you are walking down through a sparkling frozen mist that lights up the area of your stone helping you see your way through the darkness and stay on the path to the gate. The gate is frozen closed, obscured by layer upon layer of icicles in a thick mass covering the entire fence. In slow motion you sit down, floating down onto a soft pillow of thick mist to study this phenomena more closely. The light from the sphere points rays that reach out to the icicles, each one finding its own home to flicker and reveal itself in the ice to be a separate scene being played out in each individual ice capsule. You focus your attention closely on the larger ones in front of you. You see a distorted and somewhat blurry image of yourself standing in the driveway of the cottage. There are half a dozen people with you but you can't make out very many details about who they are, save one you think might be Annabelle. You can tell she and three of the others are female, and two are male. They are all silver-haired and wearing a grey uniform that resembles surgical scrubs or perhaps pajamas. You are hugging these people with each taking their turn. And as you observe the body language of all involved, you can discern you are all very happy. You get into your car and pull out of the driveway and drive away as your friends wave goodbye to you.
Through another icicle, you see a long, empty hallway with red carpeting, white walls, and black doors on either side. The third one reveals a great wildfire burning over the crest of a hill in a distant city, located somewhere with a more tropical climate. The fire swirls high into the sky coming towards you as you go towards it till it fills the entire icicle and through the flames vague images of buildings and other cities form then dissipate and disappear into the flames altogether. This icicle is beginning to melt, giving way to the flames. Your face is so close, it is almost touching and starting to feel a little too warm. So you pull back to watch as the fire consumes the ice, spreading out from the gate along the fence line. Your stone catches your attention by vibrating and you look down to see it has turned into a clear bubble of ice with lacy patterns of frost waltzing across its surface. Your cool skin gratefully absorbs the warmth of the ice fire and you watch the frost patterns swirl and vibrate more quickly, then in an instant, the bubble pops and is gone, leaving you with only a few specks of slightly glowing water on your left hand that very quickly evaporate. The fire, ice and frost are all gone now, and you are sitting on ordinary ground in front of the gate, with all being as it normally would be on the little path between the two houses. Through the gate you cross the first little road where there is some light from a lonely street lamp, oddly looking like a flying saucer on a pole with a light bulb in it. Across the road, on the path through the last acre, where the woods are somewhat thicker, you walk into total darkness and stop. You are not sure if you should continue or go back to the road that winds around to be the road that goes in front of your house if you follow it long enough. Something rustles in the bushes and you back up to be on the road. To the left is a dead end that isn't really a dead end, but the beginning of someone's driveway that goes to a house that cannot be seen. But judging from the impressive wrought iron gates blocking this way, it must be a true mansion.
You would like to find a way through or around these gates to explore what is beyond the driveway that winds out of sight and into the trees. But you are starting to feel tired again and a fine mist of light rain is dampening your face and tickling your nostrils each time you breathe in. So you take the right way and follow the smoothly flowing road this way and that between houses that can be seen and not seen. Each bend leaves behind another street light only to give you a new UFO to light your way for the next part of your journey. The road soon becomes wet and your path is sparkling, reflecting the light from each street light on its slick black surface. On the way to your front door, you see the sky is taking on a pinkish quality that is foretelling of the early dawn. One last pink star winks out of sight as you take hold of the doorknob, feeling ever so weary and ready to go back to bed to catch what you hope will be a few more hours sleep before exploring your new surroundings later on in the day. In the bedroom closet, you find a set of clean, white flannel pajamas hung on an old-fashioned wooden hanger and covered in plastic as if they had come from the dry cleaners. You remove the plastic and are happy to smell. They smell the same as your bedding and you eagerly remove your damp clothes to slip into your pajamas to feel the heavenly soft dry flannel warming your cool skin. You dive into bed with so much force you bounce on the springs a few times before the bed is still and your consciousness drains away spinning slowly down into a beautiful darkness and oblivion that lasts for several hours, leaving you in perfect peace till you are woken up by the sound of bird song early in the afternoon. End of chapter one. Thank you so much for listening.